I've been up since 4 a.m. and it's almost midnight, so let's get this started. Hey, I'm Amy and welcome or welcome back. As you can see, if you haven't watched my video from Tuesday, there have been some changes on this channel. I know in the other video I talked about not changing the name of the channel, but I ended up changing the name to the movie checklist. And if you want to know why I chose that name, go check out Tuesday's video. But before we get into my review of Murder on the Orient Express, I do want to apologize if I seem a little tired and unenthusiastic. I've been up since 4 a.m. and I worked 12 hours today, so I'm a little tired after sitting through a two-hour movie. But besides all that, I actually really enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express. It's probably not one of my favorite movies, but it has a very fun ride and a extremely great cast. It is directed by and stars Kenneth Branagh as the detective, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name because my French is terrible. But along with Kenneth Branagh, there is a star-studded cast including Dame Judi Dench, Penelope Cruz, Daisy Ridley, Leslie Odom Jr., Josh Gad, Johnny Depp, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Willem Dafoe. For me, one of the main draws of this movie was the cast. The trailers showed what looked like a very ensemble driven production and it did not disappoint but including in that it also had a really great mystery that even me someone who always tries to find the mystery out before anybody else gets there could not even solve i was finding out along with kenneth Branagh's character again i'm not going to try to pronounce his name i was trying to find who it was the entire time and i was surprised with the end. Granted, I have not seen the original Murder on the Orient Express, although I want to because I do love, love, love me some old classic movies. Maybe that's one I will watch for a throwback movie sometime in the future. And because I haven't seen the original, I will point out right up top that if any of this stuff that I talk about was in the original one, please forgive me because I don't know how closely this one compares to the original. And pretty much all I knew about this movie going into it was that there was a murder on this train with a bunch of high profile people. Uh, that's what it seemed like from the trailer, but once you get into the movie, not all of them are super high profile. But there is a detective on board and he has to figure out who done it. And because the main draw of this for me was the cast, I will be focusing a lot of what I want to talk about in this video on the cast. First and foremost, Kenneth Branagh. I love him. I mean, I know him mostly as Gildred Lockhart in Harry Potter. Classic character and probably one of my favorite parts about the second movie, which is my least favorite movie to be quite honest. If you haven't watched my Ranking All the Harry Potter movies video, you can check that out right here. But anyways, Kenneth Branagh is a superb actor. In this though, I wasn't too fond of his French accent. It's very, very strange to me. Maybe it's because I'm used to him with his English accent. He was amazing in Dunkirk earlier this year, again, with his English accent. But I will point out that, look at that mustache. That's the greatest mustache I've ever seen. And they even kind of poke fun at it in one scene in the movie, which I think is hilarious. Some big standouts out of the rest of the cast for me were Daisy Ridley and Josh Gad. Of course, the main thing Daisy Ridley is known for is being Rey in Star Wars. I think that's actually the only thing she has done so far, but she is great in this. She really shows some dramatic acting chops and I would love to see more from her in the future besides just Star Wars. She's great and Maybe even doing some comedic acting in the future would be a really cool and interesting side to see from her as well. And Josh Gad really goes into the dramatic acting. I know a lot of people think of him as the bumbling sidekick or Olaf, the snowman from Frozen, but he does a really great job of being a dramatic actor, which he talked about on a late night show recently, how he studied dramatic acting. So this is kind of something that's old hat for him and he just really fell into being a comedic actor. In this, I was listening for Olaf's voice and he disguises it pretty well. You can't even really tell that he's Olaf. Other than those two, most of the rest of the cast was their great selves and Michelle Pfeiffer really outdid herself. She just has a couple really great dramatic scenes that, I mean, you expect from Michelle Pfeiffer, but she's amazing. And Dame Judi Dench, of course, a 
perfect, flawless performance. She's superb. And Johnny Depp is, well, Johnny Depp, he plays himself pretty much. He, when is he ever a normal character? And of course I can't forget about Willem Dafoe. I love him. I mean, he's the Green Goblin and there's one scene in particular in this where you really see the Green Goblin come out of him. But he also played Jesus Christ in The Last Temptation by Martin Scorsese. And he's in so many other great things and I just love Willem Dafoe so much. He's such a great actor. And Leslie Odom Jr. I'm not super familiar with in any acting that he's done. But he did a great performance in this. He had a really intense scene that I really, really loved. It was so great. And one of my favorite things about this movie is the cinematography. There are some really great cinematic shots in this. A couple in particular are these overhead shots that they do of the train compartments where you really like feel like you're in a set piece, which is really kind of cool. But then they like do other tracking shots and it's just so cool looking and I feel like my thoughts, I can't collect my thoughts at the moment because my brain is just so mush right now. I'm sorry, but this movie just looks really cool. I do have a couple problems with this movie though. One in particular is the way they actually introduce the characters. It feels really, really messy, at least for the introductions for everyone but Kenneth Branagh's character because they introduce him, like William, right in the beginning. But a lot of the other characters, they kind of show them briefly, like for some of them, and then just don't show them for another like 30, 45 minutes and it just doesn't really feel cohesive. I just, it, I got kind of lost. Like they showed this one guy who moved to America and he was so happy to be American and you just see him kind of pass by the camera saying like, don't forget about us Americans or don't, don't say that Americans are all bad or something like that. And then you don't really see him. I'm like, oh, is he part of this? murder thing and you don't really see him or it the camera doesn't really give you a very clear view of him maybe it's just because i'm really tired when i watch this but you don't really get a clear sense of who he is until they're really focusing on interviewing everybody in the train and they really focus on this one specific guy and you really do tell that Oh, this is the guy that ran in front of the camera and said, Americans aren't all that bad. So I feel like they probably should have introduced the characters in a slightly smoother way, but maybe that's just the whole point of this. I'm not sure right this moment in time. Another problem I had with this is the sound design. I don't know if it was just the theater I was in, but sometimes the exterior sound was like super loud and then it would cut to the interior sound and you don't even hear the exterior sound like you don't even hear it muffled against the windows and it just felt a little off to me it might have just been the speakers because i noticed during the trailers at the beginning of the movie they sounded the speaker sounded really blown out so maybe that was just the speakers at the theater i was at and my final little qualm with this is that at the beginning and probably the first two acts really that make this feel very contrived like they don't really explain how or why all these people are there and how they all kind of interlink together and it kind of feels like Hercule is I think I said that right it kind of feels like he's just pulling at strings trying to tie them all together so at the end, I mean, it kind of was fixed up at the end, and I really do love the ending of this, how they wrap it all up and how they find out who the murder is and how they show what happens. It's really, really fun and interesting and kind of upped my score for me, or kind of upped the score for me. And I think it kind of forgives itself, at least for me, how kind of contrived it all feels a little bit at the beginning, middle. The beginning in the middle. After watching this version of Murder on the Orient Express, I really am excited to watch the original sometime soon and I really kind of wish it was in this book. If you don't know about my 1001 Movies Challenge, you should check out the playlist up in the corner. But I really wish it was in here because then I could get some backstory on it as well. And I really wish I had thought to even watch it before this movie came out. But that being said, I will 
probably give this version of Murder on the Orient Express a red box. Originally it had been Netflix, but the ending really kind of brought it up a little bit for me. And I would definitely rent this movie and watch it, maybe when I really feel like watching a two hour long movie cuddled up in bed with some popcorn or something. And that's all of my thoughts for Murder on the Orient Express. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below if you've seen it. And question of the video, do you think that Johnny Depp needs to play more normal characters every once in a while or do you enjoy him being crazy and weird all the time? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm really tired. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you, whoever you are. Let me know who you are in the comments down below and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're new because I love talking movies, TV shows, filmmaking, nerdy fun stuff with you guys and it's only gonna get bigger and better from here and I can't wait for you to join me on this ride. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.